Talking Hope, breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. Hope lives here in Orange County. Hi, I'm Darren Godden, Chief of Staff for City of Hope, Orange County, and this is Talking Hope. Today, I'm talking hope with Todd and Diane Kennedy. Todd is a grateful patient of City of Hope, who together with his wife, Diane, and their family, is living the promise of hope through a rare blood cancer journey. Welcome, Todd and Diane. It's really great to have you on the podcast today. Thanks, Darren. So, Diane, take us back before Todd's diagnosis and tell us about your family and what was important to you as a mom and as a wife. Sure. Well, Todd and I met in college, and we've been married now for 33 years. We have two sons who are um, 27 as of last week and then about to be 22. Um, so right before Todd's diagnosis, our oldest son was in college. Our youngest son was a junior in high school, and we were very active in our community. Um, our boys both um, played hockey all through their childhood. Our oldest um, um, had one state champion. Our youngest was up to up for that. Um, he was in, in competing and and on course for that. So we were hockey parents um, doing that crazy thing. Um, both crazy of us, hockey yeah, parents. crazy yep. hockey parents. He was a goalie. Our youngest was a goalie, and and uh, so Jun- we were junior ducks, junior yep. ducks, and and super super active. Um, you know, and walking the trails. We loved hiking around here. So we were we were busy just doing that family thing, loving awesome. Orange County life. Awesome. Live in the Orange County life. I, I love it. So Todd, walk us through what was happening um, that eventually led to your diagnosis and yeah. um, how that news really impacted you and impacted your family. Yeah, sure. Well, like Diane said, one of our favorite things to do here in Orange County has been to walk all these beautiful trails. And and so we were you know, on the trails all the time. And after just a ton of miles and, and many, many years, I started getting a little bit of back pain. I just figured, hey, I'm getting older, you know, but I finally, Diane talked to me into just hey, go see your orthopedic surgeon. You know, he might just give you another epidural shot. It's no big deal. So I went into him and a couple of weeks before Christmas, and then I went on the day after Christmas in 2017 to get the results of this MRI he wanted to do. And he said, yeah, it's no big deal. So Diane didn't even come with me to that follow-up appointment. And uh, I was in the exam room and I looked down the hall and I can see him coming towards me. And I thought, oh no. I could tell even before he opened his mouth that this was not going to be what I expected because I could see on his face this incredible concern. And he walks in the room and he didn't waste any time. He just says, Todd, I'm so sorry. I have your MRI MRI results and you've got lesions up and down your spine. And um, I'm surprised, he said, but it's, it's clear you have cancer. And I'm like, no, you got the wrong, you got the wrong report. That's not me, you know? Because I'm healthy. I'm, I was 52 at the time. I was arguably, I think, in the best health of my adult life and no family history, no indications whatsoever. This was just supposed to be something simple and routine. And he says, no, you you got cancer and, you know, and good luck. It's the day after Christmas. It's, yeah. There's never a good time to hear that news, but certainly it's not a great time a day after Christmas. So at the time, he didn't know what type of cancer either. Yeah. It was He said he thought it was either multiple myeloma or it was stage four colon cancer that had spread in metastasized to the bones. It was one of the two. Um, and then good luck. Um, you know, um, wow. we're calling office after office, trying to figure out, you know, what does he have? Where do we go? And we really fumbled around too, for almost two weeks, trying to even confirm the, the right diagnosis. And, and we didn't know where to go. We were literally begging to be seen. And, and finally got some tests done that confirmed that I have uh, multiple myeloma. You know, it's a, a relatively rare blood cancer, uh, very complex, and and we really didn't know where to go. And and uh, we asked our friends, and we said, you know, we'll go anywhere. We'll we'll travel to the East Coast. We'll go down to Houston, wherever. And people kept saying, you know, you need to go to City of Hope, and you need to go to City of Hope. And we didn't know what City of Hope was actually. Mm. We had not heard yeah. of it. Cancer was not part of our family story, you know. And right. and uh, so we just called and and. Uh, and took it from there. Wow. So before we jump into, I'd love to hear more about your, your treatment journey as well. Yeah. What, what does that do to you? And then your, how did you tell your boys and what, your world was upside down, right? How, how, yeah. Talk to, talk to us about that. I think in a perfect world, um, we would have had time to digest it ourselves a little bit, 
Um, but like we said, it was the day after Christmas. Our college son was home. We had, you know, plans, activities. We had family visiting from out of town and everyone knew Todd was going to this back appointment, a doctor appointment, and then going to be back. And, you know, we had, we had plans and things to do and we didn't have the luxury of time to digest. We had to just be honest and open right out mm -hmm. from the front. Um, and in the end, I think, um, that was, it wasn't the way we planned it, but it turned out to be a great thing because they, everyone has been with us on the journey right from the beginning. And we're, um, we've taught our boys that, you know, cancer is not something you hide from and your, your health is not something you ignore. Uh, and they've learned right from the start how to be advocates for themselves and, and have watched their dad, um, you know, do all that he has done to make sure that he's around for a long time um and and they have that now in their mind of mm -hmm. how you handle when you get these news what you do is you advocate you get to the mm -hmm. best place you know those they got to see right from day one yeah. what that meant yeah almost a blessing that your son was yeah. home right i mean right normally you'd probably want to create the the story and everything right. but having them there is probably and they well, saw like said, process it, was, it. Yeah, you know, the, the whole thing from the shocking news to, you know, the denial, it's not mine, you must have gotten the wrong MRI, you know, to the, okay, let's rally the troops, let's call out, you know, to where should we go, let's make the phone calls and do the work to get to the right place. So they learned that lesson along with us. Yeah, and it is, I think it's one of the earliest examples of the unexpected blessing, you know, that's not the way we would have anticipated it would have happened, or if we had been able to kind of design it, we would have said, oh, let's let's process this and then we'll tell them and we'll we'll get some counseling on how to tell them and all that other stuff. But I think it just worked out. It and there have been so many unexpected blessings along the way where the path took a different turn. But in hindsight, you think, boy, that wow. was good. Yeah. That was a really yeah. good thing that it went that way. So you you make your way to City of Hope. Um, did you find out that you had multiple myeloma before you were at City of Hope or once you arrived at City of Hope? No, I did. I I had had a local biopsy that confirmed the diagnosis. Okay. And um, before we go on to your, yeah. your treatment, then um, some listeners may not know what my multiple myeloma is. So can you kind of give us that in layman's terms and how it yeah, affects you? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a uh, blood cancer. It's the second most common blood cancer. There's about 160,000 of us living in the U.S., about 35,000 newly diagnosed. And it's a, a cancer of uh, plasma cells in the bone marrow. And so these are white cells and you need healthy, normal white cells to fight off infection. And uh, that's one of the biggest challenges of a myeloma diagnosis is your risk of infection. So really a crummy time to be immunocompromised in the age of COVID, right? You know? Right. So when they when 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 COVID's running wild and everybody's saying be aware and thoughtful about your immunocompromised neighbors, people might have an image of what that looks like. Well, that's me. Yeah. That's me and so many other patients that, you know, are dealing with cancer or other uh, diseases of the immune system. So that's what, what myeloma is. The tricky part on it, when you do a, a quick scan on, on Google, which, you know, mixed whether or not you want to do that or not, but, but uh, you find out quickly that um, there's no cure. Mm. Uh, that's kind of the bummer part. But um, there's a lot of reason for hope because the pipelines are extremely full and there are breakthroughs coming, you know, month on month. And so there's justifiable reasons to uh, to be hopeful that a cure will arrive in the not too distant future. And some of that incredible research is, of course, happening right there at City of Hope. Uh, that's uh, no cure yet, right? Right. No that's cure hopefully, yet. Hopefully in our lifetime, we will see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, everybody likes us. to say it's an incurable cancer. I say, it's, it's, by incurable, do you mean it's impossible? I don't think that's true. It's just not curable yet. It yet, is possible right. and we will get there. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. I believe that. Um, tell us about your treatment journey then with multiple myeloma. Once you got to City of Hope, what did that look like? Yeah, or well. What has that looked like? Yeah, the first interaction in our desperation in those couple of weeks after Christmas, fumbling around and people said, go to City of Hope. Um, you know, I ultimately just called the 800 number. It was a Friday afternoon of, of a, a holiday weekend, and I, I picked up the phone at four o'clock, and I, I called, and I just said, my name is Todd. I've just been diagnosed with myeloma, and I will never forget it. There was this incredibly compassionate operator on the line, and her name was Kim. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I'll never forget her name even, mm -hmm. and she said, we can help you, 
And after what we had been through in those previous two months, I, I lost it, to be honest. And I almost still lose it every time I tell this story because we were in such a difficult spot. And just to hear we can help you was the very, very start of our of our City of Hope experience. And I was on the phone with her for just a couple of minutes. She verified my insurance. I told her, I said, I hear Dr. Amrita Krishnan is terrific. And if it's possible, I'd love to see her. And she said, send her an email. And I said, okay, I'll send her an email. So we wrote her an email and Dr. Krishnan got right back and said, yes, absolutely. I look forward to seeing you. I was in her office three days after I made that initial phone call. And started treatment the very next day. And started treatment the very next day, which was my 53rd birthday. And to be honest, the the drugs that were flowing through those IV lines was probably the best birthday gift I could have ever had. Because I had not only the treatment, but I had the confidence in the treatment plan that Dr. Krishnan laid out because she is one of the foremost authorities in myeloma, not just in California, but in the world. Hmm. And so, you know, from the very start, her expertise was crystal clear. And that gave me incredible confidence that I had the plan that was going to ultimately lead to my successful, you know, treatment and high quality of life. And she's been with me every step of the way for five years. I've had nine different powerful drugs, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, targeted therapy. I had a stem cell transplant, radiation, and even despite all of that, because it's been so personalized and because that's so, ex so expert in kind of putting the right combinations together, I've had an incredible quality of life throughout. And I'm in remission. I've been in remission for over four years and and um, very often still optimistic. on treatment, still on treatment every single day. But uh, but it's a deep, durable remission that's going to have me well positioned for that day when the next breakthrough or the breakthrough after that leads to my future cure. That's Awesome news. Almost brings a tear to my eye. Like, I mean, I, that is, that's awesome. I, I love to hear that. Diane, you have such a great smile. And um, I know that you've probably been the anchor through all of this for your husband and for your family. Um, so talk to us about um, the importance of a care team or a support team around you. Um, I know it's not easy. And there were probably days where you didn't feel like an anchor um, or you felt like you were at the bottom of the ocean yeah. only. <laughs> so talk yeah. to us about that and why it's so important and who should people really bring around them in, in, in this sort of a situation? Well, having a care team is so important and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a spouse um, and, and it can be, you know, an adult child. It can be a neighbor, a friend um, that can join you. Um, and there's it. And then for that care person, um, the first few weeks, uh, you're just, you're all in. You don't have time to think about yourself. Um, but as things get better and you, you know, have a plan, um, it's important for care members, care partners, like that's what I call myself, a care partner um, with Todd, because we work together on this. Um, but it's important for care partners to, you know, put their oxygen mask on first at that point, you know, to worry about their well-being and health. Um, and mental um, strength um, through that. Um, and, and then you work together. And Todd and I went to all the doctor's appointments and the treatment at the beginning was such that um, he wasn't able to drive home. So I would you know be there with him all day and then drive home together. Um, it was important for us too with having our, our youngest son was still home. Um, we had a dog at home. Um, he went, so when he was at school, we had friends and neighbors that would help with either, you know, walking the dog for us or, or yeah. helping out with them, um, but just making sure our 17 year old at the time was, was not just home sitting by himself that, you know, that he could have an, a family to go out to dinner with if we weren't back in time to go out to dinner. Or Yeah. You need to ask what you need mm -hmm. specifically, you know, we didn't need any casseroles on the doorstep and yeah. that's very valuable for some people, but that wasn't us. We needed somebody to walk the dog when we we're up in Duarte for, you know, 10 hours. Yeah. something like that. So, um, yeah, so that team of, you know, I needed a care partner and she's been a partner in every sense of the word. And then that other support network of family, friends and community and other patients too has been, yeah. have been really, really valuable. You get so much help in that support network from people that have already walked in your shoes, you know, wow. and layer that on top of just an expert care team. And, and that's a pretty, that's a, that's a pretty good uh, team to, you know, help you through this marathon. Yeah. And, and Diane, I've, I've heard you say in other settings um, that City of Hope didn't just care for for Todd, but they cared for you and they cared for your family. And I hear that all the time from other people. Tell us from your perspective, what, is, what does that really look like and what does that mean? Gosh, and it's just the little things. Um, 
when um, Todd gets his treatment at City of Hope, Orange County, and we walk in and the the two women that are at the front desk there to, to sign in, you know, they greet both of us. And he went to a meeting the other day and I wasn't there. And the first thing they I said, said, where's your wife? Yeah. Like, Which, you know, I'm going solo today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they missed just, her. <laughs> it, they treat, you know, both of us like we're valuable members um, of the of the care team that is helping get Todd healthy. Um, and, and doctors and everyone there is, you know, can we get you water? How can, you know, how are you doing? Right. I literally started crying once when, you know, cause it was so all about, you know, Todd and, and someone, how are you doing? It's like, Oh, me? You're like, no, one, no that, one's ever heard of that before me. until I got here. Until I got there. And, you know, it's just um, amazing that the care and you really do feel that you're part of the city of hope family. You're not just a number or, I'm not just the spouse, you know, I, I'm, I'm a valuable member of the team that's on making Todd healthy. Yeah. And we're, we're so glad you feel that way. And I, I, like I said, I hear that from other families as well. And um, we, we teach that in like our OC orientation. And I think yeah. the broader city of hope as well, just about, you know, how important it is to care for the patient and whoever's there with the patient and around the patient at any given time. You know, you talk about Kim, Todd, um, remembering the words that came out of her mouth. That's something that I, I've heard you say before in other um, areas as well. And I've always, I share that as we do our OC orientation, that it's so important, the words that you say. You may not know what to say, but what you do say should be positive and encouraging because those are the things that people can hold on to. So um, very exciting that you've shared that and experiencing that. So um, when City of Hope's Irvine Cancer Center opened um, last year, you were both part of the opening day, um, the group of grateful patients who celebrated with the ride in the balloon with the, uh, um, the the big letters that said hope on one side, rise above cancer on the other. And I remember seeing both of your smiles that day. Um, take me back to that day. What What did that really represent to you, the opening of City of Hope here in Irvine? And why was it so important for you and for our community? Well, when I was diagnosed, like I said, just right after Christmas in 2017, and then started my trips to Duarte in in uh, 2018, when we when we first heard I had cancer, and the people said, "Go to City of Hope." We said, "Like City of who? City of yeah. where is this city? I, I I haven't heard of it." And then somebody said, "You know what's in Duarte?" And we're like from Southern California. I'm like, I don't know where Duarte is right. either. You know. <laughs> But now we know where Duarte is and all the different routes you can take to get there from Orange County. And none of them are easy and none of them are quick. It takes forever. And in those first two years, we made over 100 trips, round trips to Duarte. And I would be driving there generally, you know, at sunrise. And then at sunset, she would be driving home because I'd be too wiped out for my treatment. And not everybody has that ability, just mm -hmm. the access. They, they don't have that. So on that opening day, it really kind of hit us both that for people like us in our community, it means that they won't have to make that drive. And so it just means that 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 the access is there that wasn't necessarily there for everybody. And the other part that I thought was really just just so powerful about that day was just the balloon. The symbolism of the balloon itself to me was kind of like this proclamation that City of Hope is now here and we want everybody to be aware of it. Look up in the sky and you can see that now hope is here in Orange County and that we can rise above cancer was the other thing that it said. And I think just the awareness that City of Hope is here is going to be so powerful and people will know the name and they'll know the importance of what City of Hope really represents, the importance of an NCI designated comprehensive cancer center and how it's so much more than the beautiful building that is there. It's about the brilliant minds and the coordinated care, the compassion, the training that says we can help, you know, the people that genuinely care and, and have that cutting edge expertise. So I think now when somebody hears those horrible words, you have cancer like we did, they'll know, call City of Hope. And I think that's just that just changes everything for, for generations of people here in our community. And that just makes us so, so happy. Um, you know, to be a part of and, and to just know that it's going to have that impact. And that's what that day was all about, was just kind of announcing it to the world and to our community that City of Hope is here. Yeah. Both of our sons were in town for that. Oh, that was and incredible. it was, and we got to ride up in the balloon with both of them, you know, and they'd been with us for 
sorry, now I'm going to get emotional. You know, at that, that point it was four and a half years. Now it's, uh, now it's over five years, you know, with us every step of the way. So that was, that was pretty special. It's special too, because yeah. I can, I can take whatever you throw at me. But the thing that's so nice is having City of Hope here for our kids. Yeah. You know, and for other people's kids and for the generations to come. And, and not just if you get diagnosed, but the things that you guys are doing as far as prevention and early detection. So somebody doesn't have to go through what I've been through. The best way That's to beat cancer is not to get it in the first place. Yeah, so, right. and, and having City of Hope here is going to make a difference in that way. Yeah. I, I believe it. I believe it. Um, you're both tireless advocates and uh, you're raising awareness for multiple myeloma, but really you're, you're raising awareness for hope. I, you, you, you just, it oozes out of you both. Um, and I, 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 I'm, I'm always inspired by your story and how you share about it, how you're so real about it. I think our listeners today are able to see that as well. And um, that idea of oozing hope is, um, something people need. So let me ask you this question that we ask all of our podcast participants, and I want to hear from both of you. So um, let's start with Diane. Diane, what what does hope mean to you? Oh, we we talk about this quite a bit. Um, hope is just the the promise of of a future, um, and we're big advocates for having hope. Um, but we don't believe in just blind, baseless hope. We believe in hope in action. Um, I'm sorry, I know I'm stealing what you would no, say, but this, this is yeah. our joint message always. Um, help is so important, but having action with your hope is, you know, doing something that is is what makes the hope real. Yeah, right. Todd. Well, I think, and in the in this case, I think it's justifiable hope. We have we have hope and we have faith, and that it is a it's a foundation. But in the case of City of Hope, our hope is based on knowing that if you have my disease, that if you look at, you can go into clinicaltrials.gov and you can see where is the research being done around the country for myeloma. And there are very few places, like very few places that are doing more clinical trials on myeloma than at City of Hope. And it's breakthrough potential cures in bispecifics or CAR-T or Immuno other immunotherapies or just understanding what's that right combination to get the right drugs to the right people at the right time. And so understanding the science gives me justifiable. It's based on that. And then that's what, like Diane said, is that's what fuels me to take the action mm. to be so closely connected with the science and be so closely with City of Hope and, and other researchers actually around the country to try and turn that hope into reality justifiable hope and action that that's that's great so let's let's um let's come to an end on this what is your shout it from the rooftop message today to our listeners well i would say take that same hope and let that um inspire you to do a few things and the first thing is to get educated uh, and then use that education to get empowered because really as a patient, you need to be your own best advocate. Even though I've got great advocates in the entire team at City of Hope, ultimately it's the patient's responsibility along with their care partner to, to really be your own best advocate. And then use, um, use that education and empowerment to get connected. Get if, if The number one connection, my take home message is the number one connection is you have to get an expert on your team that has absolute deep, deep expertise in your specific cancer. Somebody that is not only directly involved in the research, ideally, uh, but at least is seeing patients like you on a daily basis, because it's through that understanding of the evolving science, which is happening very, very quickly, and seeing individual patients that they can kind of do that science and art thing, blending mm -hmm. the two to come up with that exact right plan that's going to give you the best quality of life. So, you know, let the hope inspire action and, and the, the parts of that are the education, empowerment and connection. And your first most important connection is a true expert in your specific cancer. Thank you, Todd. Anything to add, Diane? <clears throat> no, I think he I think he nailed it. That's, you know, what we say always starting right is so important. Your first odds and best chances of beating cancer is to start right the first time. And so that's where getting to an NCCN cancer center is so important. 
Great. Thank you so much. Todd and Diane Kennedy, thank you for talking hope with us today and for sharing your story and your insights. Uh, I am inspired and moved by your resilience and your commitment to help others. And um, you, you guys have just been incredible people. And we thank you for your advocacy for City of Hope as well. And it's been a pleasure to have you on our podcast today. And thank you all for joining us for the podcast. Until next time, I'm Darren Godden, and this is Talking Hope. Thank you all for listening to Talking Hope, where breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer have been brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. This is the hope you've been waiting for. For more information, visit cityofhope.org forward slash OC, or make an appointment at any of City of Hope's five Orange County locations, including City of Hope Orange County Lenar Foundation Cancer Center, the most advanced cancer treatment center in Orange County. Call 888-333-4673. That's 888-333-HOPE.